Welcome to the final episode of the first fully charged van series. For the final van, we are going small. The smallest van we've caught so far, and it's effectively a converted car, and a small car at that. It's the very, very successful Renault Zoe, and this is the Renault Zoe van. There's your perfect yeah. EV camper van, you know. So to finish our fully charged van series, we're actually gonna go small. We're gonna look at the smallest van of any that we've looked at so far. This is the Renault Zoe van. The front half is identical to the car. To be honest, it drives like a small car. It drives like a Renault Zoe. So um, if you wanna see, if Robert's actually done a full review of the Renault Zoe car, Go and check that out and he'll go into a lot of depth and detail about the car and, its, and, and the workings of itself, but basically this is identical to that. What I will want to just show you quickly is what happens at the front, because that is where you charge the Renault Zoe car and, unsurprisingly, the Renault Zoe van. In here, you can either charge from a standard 7 kilowatt hour, uh, or, or 22 kilowatt charger, um, or you can charge a CCS, the bigger the rapid charge up to 50 kilowatts. And that's handy because the one thing that this van has got, although it's small in size, it's got a massive range. So it's got a 52 kilowatt hour battery and that will give you say, roughly 230 miles range, which is phenomenal. So pretend that I know almost next nothing <laughs> about how charging works, <laughs> not, not a stretch, and run me through how Someone completely new to this would, would, would charge their electric van compared to their old. Right. I mean, van. so say you've got you, I don't know, a plumbing business has got two vans. So not a big company, but a small company, kind of owner operated company, and you've got two vans and you can have two wall chargers on an ordinary uh, household. You don't need some special industrial supply. Uh, and you, it's a seven kilowatt charger. So it charges faster than a three, a lot faster than a three pin plug. You're adding. A, a kind of 30 or 40 miles range in an hour on average on those ones. Depends on the car and, and so and you, so that's an overnight charger and those are relatively cheap to fit and they've also there are grants available particularly for businesses. And they just stick in the outside of your house and, and you, you stick the cable out, out, yeah. out and plug it. It doesn't need to be in a building. It can be outside. It's waterproof. All those things and that's been the case for quite a long time. But then I get that when it gets to much bigger. So to say if you've got 15 vehicles or 20 vehicles, then there's a whole other. That's what we're talking about, vehicle to grid systems yeah. become more plausible in that uh, sense. And they have all got timers and, and the, the vans have software that allows them to switch on at midnight or, you know, through two in the morning, whenever electricity is the cheapest. I mean, there's so many business cases because there's some vans would be running in the middle of the night as well. I mean, it's oh, quite yeah. possible. So it's not always the case. But, you know, there are, that's the advantage you can have with electric vehicles. It's like if you went to a petrol station at two in the morning and petrol was 30p a, <laughs> a gallon and you go at six in the evening and it's five quid you know it's that difference there are advantages there because every time i've seen commercial vans i sort of looked at the charger and go oh it's only got it's only got like a seven kilowatt yeah. input and you think oh what about rapid and then you realize you don't those vans you know all the vans you see driving around a city like bristol or london or manchester or anywhere they're not actually going that far. That's always the, no. the thing. You sort of assume all vans are doing 1,000 miles a day. They're not. They're doing 40, 50, 60 with lots of stops. So that, as long as you can charge it overnight, that's all you need. But the rapid charging is, you know, for longer trips does start to make a difference. So if you've got a van that will do 200 miles for real with a load on motorways in the rain, you know, all those yeah. caveats. But you can stop at a rapid charger and refill it you know, it, even if it, ta it takes, takes longer than uh, filling up a tank. Yeah. But the driver, you know, I think there are, well, there's laws about yeah, driving the commercial vehicles. And that's the stuff. You've got to actually have a break. It, much less than an hour, you can refill that van. And then 100 kilowatts, which is becoming much more common, 100 kilowatt recharging is, is like 500 miles range an hour. Yeah. But you haven't got 500 miles range, so you're talking then like 20 minutes yeah. to half an hour and you've filled it again. But it's, the important thing here is that it doesn't matter how big the charge is, it's what your car or your van can accept. Yes, exactly. So 
if you're looking for something with range and rapid charging, this is a good option. I should say that rapid charger, that 50 kilowatt charger, is an optional extra. But it comes to standard with a 7 or 22 kilowatt uh, 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 charger, so that's all good. Now, in the back, you can access, it's got not sliding doors at the side, they're just normal stores. As you can see, it's very much the Zoe car uh, converted to a, to, to a van. That gives you access to uh, the, the compartment behind the seats, and there's a, there's a strengthened parcel shelf here, which gives you two levels of storage. And if you want to, that parcel shelf does just pop out, which gives you a lot more, uh, more room and height inside. So who's this van for? This is not a sort of general van, it's got quite a specific niche, but if you've got fairly small loads, fairly light loads, you like the idea of having a small vehicle, easy to drive, with a huge range and rapid charging, this is the van for you. Those people out there who are trying to convince you to move from combustion vans to, to electric vans, what sort of advice would you give them as far as charging is concerned? I, mean, I think the thing is the big difference is between a, comp say a small company with 10, 15 vehicles, and the, if the company goes, we're going to have electric, vehicle, electric delivery vans or whatever they do with them, though all the reports I've heard back from the guys that work in those vans and the women that work in those vans, they just love them straight away. They're easier to drive, they're quieter, they're, you know, they're just better vehicles from that point of view. There's never a problem with that. And if the, that company has arranged the charging, so they've got a depot and they've got chargers there, and when you get back to the depot, you plug it in, that's just, it's like a, the easiest transition. Yeah. The, a harder one is for like sole traders or people with a couple of vans who maybe don't even park them off the street, but leave them on the street. That is more of a challenge because then where do you charge those? And I don't know how you solve that unless you're in a place where you can plug in on the street, which is becoming more common. But. If you're going to charge your van at home, then you're going to have to look at getting a point installed. Yeah, really. it's probably worth getting a point installed. I mean, you can charge off a 13 amp plug, an ordinary domestic socket. It just takes longer. And if you've got a 50 or 75 kilowatt hour battery in it's, a van, that's a long time. It's 20 odd hours. Yeah. I calculated for the for the even for the small battery. I think the Vival was 50 kilowatts. I think it was like 20 odd hours. Yeah, which but is... I mean, the thing is, that's if it was really empty. Yes, true. and that's the thing, and, and you only know that from experience. You know, the amount of times I've got down to sort of four or five percent in an electric vehicle really rare and i quite like it it's like an yes yeah. electric vehicles don't need as much maintenance they're spending less time off the road uh, if a vehicle goes off the road you have lost that opportunity to earn revenue these vehicles so far we've seen they stay on the road longer they cost less to run and they're better to drive now you mentioned a bit charging and this is why i'm still trying my head around and you, you, you you're well, I can see you're an expert on this as far as I'm concerned. Well, compared to me, Am anyway. An amateur expert. <laughs> Vehicle to grid. The yeah. idea that you can either minimise your cost for charging or actually make money from charging. Yeah. And does that still work for somebody who's got one or two vans? Oh, it certainly would work from the point of view... It depends. It, it's so dependent on so many things. So it depends when you're using them. So if you're r literally using them, say, in a nine-to-five structure and that you don't sort of work at night or in the evenings or something like that so after five o'clock the van's parked so say you've done 40 miles in it it has an 80 mile range it's got roughly 40 miles range left which in a van is going to be something like i don't know what 20 30 kilowatt hours you can technically sell that electricity at a market price that's above what you buy it at okay. overnight you could sell that in a vehicle to grid system and there's companies that are doing this already i mean it's, this isn't like a future possibility it's happening now so you have a vehicle to grid connector at your depot driver comes back plugs the car in, or someone plugs the car in that energy can go from that battery back into the grid you're selling that electricity to the grid at a higher price than you bought it the night before and then that van then at midnight or whenever electricity gets much cheaper it starts to charge the van and that it's automated it's not you don't have to kind of be there to yeah you know oh that's not that much you know but that system is becoming more and more popular and particularly with big fleets that's when it really yeah. if you've got two vans it's kind of debatable whether the expense of putting those systems in yeah. is worth it if you've got 50 vans it's definitely worth it. if you've got a thousand vans which some big companies will have it's a phenomenal change in their operating costs because they can mitigate a lot of the cost of running those vans to minimal amount by, by selling that electricity. I mean, with this, we're, we've got the advantage of renewable energy as well, so we'll recoup it a lot quicker than someone who's on mains. But if you get smart with off-peak tariffs, you can charge that fully for, and do 100 miles 
for the, you know not more much more than a pound so when you compare that to a full tank of diesel in the Renault Kangoo it'll be quite quick that it pays back and we found that they're more reliable the electric vehicles because there's less moving parts yeah. so you could find that you can extend the life of a vehicle significantly longer than a petrol or diesel one especially in this sort of scenario where you're going to be doing a lot of start stop driving generally the people who go like couriers and yeah. people that use these vans you know from a company that's got two or three hundred vans you suddenly go this is a huge asset for us that's beyond just moving the kit around and moving the people around this is really a really useful thing to have that we can store you know you could then effectively charge a van in the day say at a weekend when it's not being used you can sell that electricity at night <laughs> or in the evening when it's when it's most expensive and you've got it nothing you know you've got it off the roof of your warehouse which is there anyway So you drove four vans in this series then? Yeah. Because I'm trying to remember because I saw the, the Vauxhall one when it was here in the car park, which looked really nice. Yeah, yeah, I just had a look inside. And it's, and it's big. That is a big van. Yeah, I think the Vauxhall is probably my favourite right. for a couple of reasons. One, I like the fact that Vauxhall have, have, have really taken this on because they've, they've given like 14 different variants. It's not right. just like one version. They're obviously going, it's not a token effort. No. The inside is the most comfortable. It's probably the most high tech, right? With heads-up display and that sort of wow. stuff, you know. And, and it's just it's nicely set out inside, really comfortable to drive. It's got the biggest range and the biggest battery, which is not necessarily, as we've discussed, a good thing for everyone. Yeah. But the, the stuff, the journeys I do tend to be long. I don't really commute. I tend to do long journeys, so having that that rapid charging in two-mile range is actually good for me. And mostly because, as people would have noted from our discussion at arrival. The main thing I want to do with vans is convert them into camper yes. vans. Yes. So, no, it's not necessarily it's not the, ve the best van for everyone. No. I think it's the nicest van, but it's the best van for me. Yeah. And then we looked at the Vito, the E-Vito, the Mercedes. Right. Again, really nice, n nice van. Uh, very luxurious inside, as you expect from Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. Like, like actually all the vans, you'll still see petrol. Some have got like sealed off petrol caps and that, or you know, wow. little flaps. Yeah. Because they've just taken the shell. And a few people say, oh, that's, that's, you know, that's, a, bit, that's a bit rubbish. But actually, so, well, if it's cheaper for the manufacturers to just use the old shells, understandably, that's makes sense. Fine. And if that's, yeah. if that's passed on to the consumer, yeah. then it's all well and good. But yeah, it's a nice van. Not the same range as the, um, as the Vivaro. And actually, the same, roughly the same price. Right. Um, I mean, as far as load goes, the medium vans are all pretty much the same. They all yeah. want to take a Euro pallet. They've got roughly the same capacity. And then the smaller vans, we look at the Maxxis, which is the, basically an old LDV. It's probably less high spec, let's put right. it that way. You get inside and it's pretty industrial. Yeah. But then actually, if you're, you might, if you're driving around, you might want that. You want, I don't yeah. want you don't need big lights fancy. and no. heads up displays. No. I want a van that's going to get filthy and I don't have to care. Yeah. Um, and because that's much cheaper. It's right. a much cheaper van. Oh, one thing I should actually say about the Vivaro, it's got a tow bar. Oh. It's got a metric ton towing capacity. Wow. Which is really handy. Yeah. Especially for the, the eight, nine seater people carriers, because in my head I was thinking about it. So then you could do a, like airport, a, a, a airport transport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we looked at the Renault Kangoo, yeah. the new one, because they've been around for years. Yeah, they were certainly early, really yeah. early into the game. So we looked at the new one. Again, lovely little van, super reliable. What's nice is that because it's been around in various areas for years, they've had a chance to kind of iron out the problems. So right. um, I think that's a nice, reliable, a small van, but a nice, reliable for your, for your plumbers and your carpenters. Yeah. It's the ones that the Brecon Beacons use. They, they get more range than is predicted, right. even in winter, and the fact that they've got quite a hilly yeah. uh, environment. So they're super reliable little vans. Right. There's been a few things we've missed out because of, because of, just because of COVID. We've not yeah. looked at the vans, all the vans we wanted. The um, Nissan ENV 200 yes. is a classic. It's been around almost as long or longer than the Kangoo. Yeah. It's one of the first fans anyway. But we could only get hold of old ones. Right. I thought it wasn't fair to show an old one with like a 50 Yeah, because they were pretty the initial. I've yeah. driven one of the early ones and it's pretty limited. Yeah. And then no bigger vans. So there's, I mean, there is some large, the, the, the Mercedes are bringing out a Sprinter. Right. Um, the Volkswagen are bringing out, I think it's the Kraft, what it's called. It's basically the big brother version of the, their transporter. Yeah. Ivercore bringing out a big van. There's, there's going to be at least five or six large vans right. on the market, well, next year, yeah. hopefully. 
COVID notwithstanding. Yeah. And then there's a load more medium sized vans. And then finally, really, we, we, the, the smaller vans, we've, we've, we're going to look at the, the Renault Zoe, yeah. which is, a, I think, again, quite a niche one. It's just a, it's a really, it's a car, yeah. a convert. The very fact that, that Renault Zoe, and I'm not, I mean, I've never driven one, but it's one yeah, of really the nice cars to drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of the most, it's one of the real success stories from yeah. the car point of view. So I'm hoping that the van conversion should be, should be again yeah. a, a sort of front runner for, for the small business. Really for a small, small business, business, it makes a lot of sense. It's in the back half when things really change. You've got this bulkhead here, and that separates you from from the load area. It's not huge. It's only a, a sort of one meter cube capacity. I only take about 380 kilograms of load. But that's what it's meant for. It's not a big, heavy haulage vehicle. It's a small, it's a small van, small car van. You've seen the new Volkswagen uh, Buzz Cargo. Oh no. So the Volkswagen Buzz. The Volkswagen Buzz, yeah. yeah which looks an old fashioned, you know. It looks like Scooby a classic Doo. old Scooby Doo, yeah. <laughs> Scooby Doo VW. Yeah. Well, they're doing one that's a cargo version. Oh, wow. I think, it's just, I think it's two front seats and then basically empty the back. Yeah. I think it's going to come out next year. Right. Obviously, COVID all bets are off. But, yeah. um, but well, there's your, there's your perfect yeah. EV camper van, you know, cruising down the. Butt. Oh, yeah. I mean, range wise. I don't know what the range will be. No. But. I mean, I can imagine that within the next year, you know, having a, a, a van that really does 250 plus miles on a charge is not impossible at all. I mean, it's a... Well, the Vauxhall Vivaro, the big battery, the 75 kilowatt hour right. battery, will do well over 200 miles. Right. Well over 200 miles. So you think, in a van like that, say you, you drive maybe f four hours. Yeah. Now, after four hours of driving... You've got to stop. I'm quite happy to stop for yeah. an hour. And I'm yeah. brewing a bite to eat, so. Yeah, I mean, you could do four hours because you're tough. I can do two and a half and I'm best busting for a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's an interesting area, isn't it? Because it, fully charged has always been about cars and you sort of think cars. Actually, vans are such a vitally important, you know, all the deliveries that, especially now, you yeah. know, the amount of vans that come yeah. to our house now in a week, yeah. it's just gone off. The and I think people in this year, the year of COVID, have come to appreciate just how important it's like the silent workforce yeah. behind the scenes delivering things, delivering and supporting stuff. things, yeah. keeping th keep the country running. Yeah. And if 80% of those 4 million vans, if we can, if, if 3.2 million vans tomorrow could be electric, could be electric amazing change. That's a huge, yeah. a huge difference to. So yeah, to, 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 well, yeah. To, to how the country runs yeah. and to the, to the quality of, of pollution and all that stuff. Yeah, and I mean, it is that thing of, you know, if, you've got a, if you're a company with a fleet of vans, the, 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 the technical complexity of transferring, you know, of charging them is it's so much easier to deal with as a company than it is as an individual. That got to, yes. Oh, I've got to park it off the street and find a charger. You know, you've, if you've got a fleet of vans, you've got somewhere to park them by default, you know. And your, and your fuel costs we'll go to zero floor, yeah. and then might actually end up... Go, going negative. <laughs> we're getting paid to fuel the vehicles up. <laughs> well, that concludes the first fully charged van series. I hope you found it informative. I've certainly learned a lot along the way. What's great is that there are so many vans coming to market in 2021. A lot more small, a lot more medium, and then I think that that last few we've not had a chance to address, that the big vans, there's at least five or six who are going to be in the market by the end of this year. So the landscape is very much changing for vans, so is the choice and what's an offer, and hopefully that cost will come down as well. What would be great is if you want to put in the comments below any vans you'd like to see in any future van series we do, I'd be much appreciated. It's also nice to get some feedback and find out what matters to you. Apart from that, I'm going to end, unsurprisingly, by thanking our Patreon supporters and our YouTube members. And if that's something you might be interested in, please take a look at the links below. Please like and subscribe, that's really helpful too. And apart from that, as always, if you have been, thanks for watching. Beautiful. Right. Yeah. I, I, I walked away off a, a, a series two tangent there. Yeah, that's good. I was like, no, 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 we're, we're finished off. Oh, we could do an atomic van.